Since we are a few days apart from the new league, I decided to make a series in which I explain to you the layouts. This will help you progress the campaign faster. You have to keep in mind, I am not a racer. But I'm not a noob either when it comes to completing the campaign. Usually it takes me about 4.5 hours, maybe 4 hours if I get a really good start, but usually about 4.5 hours to finish the campaign. So in this 10 part series I want to show you how to complete the, the campaign faster by explaining you the layouts. These are not going to be perfect layouts, I don't know them, I'm not a racer as I said, but I know them to some extent that I can show you and I can explain to you in such a way that it will make it easier for you to uh, the next time you're leveling a character. So with that being said, this will be the first episode and I'm going to explain to you Act 1. In Act 1, Twilight Strength, just keep to the right, keep it to the shore and you're always going to get to the hill quite easily. When you reach the coast, you when want ready, to stay close to this wall until you find uh, you're climbing until you find this on your minimap right here and this means you are going to climb at this point what you want to do you want to guide yourself and try to go as much to the right but at the same time up sometimes you are going to be forced to go right and down but the idea is to always try to go right and also up if possible like Look just just how little on my map it's discovered just by doing that. Let's show you Tidal Island. Tidal Island, you're always going to go left. If you don't see this right here. So this is a perfect example. Please pay attention to my cursor. So you see this, you're climbing. If the distance from this point to the wall on this side it's the same as the distance from this point to the wall here that means you have to turn but since the distance from this differs from the distance to this you can keep going in this direction the only time you turn Please. by the only time you turn and go the other way is when you get a square here so the distance from the point of this it's similar to this you are going to turn and go the other way around if you don't see anything you just keep going maybe I can show you another example so right now it's still it's the same example I hope you get the idea if you are going to see a square something that resembles to a square the distance would be the same then you have to turn and go the other way around but for the most part no in the mud flats usually the quest items are going to be either in a, a curved line slightly curved line in a straight line or in a triangle for the most part what you have to understand is uh, the position of the entrance because the entrance is facing downwards it means that the exit is going to be far to the right always like this if the entrance was facing uh, upwards it it would mean that the entrance would be sit, would be on the top right here I'm going to show you Maybe I can get an, a layout. No. When I'm ready. Come on. So now the entrance is facing upwards, so the exit will be somewhere top here. 
don't know exactly where, but it's going to be somewhere on the on this. Uh, let's see. So the exit. No, this is the fetid pool, so it would be the last exit. Which is not that common, but it's going to be on the top. It's going to be on the top. It usually it's somewhere in this area. Now, when it comes to the raw nest, I'm going to show you. There is some water around them, and if you follow the water, oftentimes it will lead you to the next next nest. But sometimes it can lead you to the boss, like in this case, or it can lead you to the water. Let's see. Uh, the problem with this, so if you follow the water, it led to the next uh, nest. The problem with this method is that when you are when you are playing the game, you're not necessarily paying attention to that and can result in you dying. Submerged passage. What you do at submerged passage from the waypoint, you usually try to go down and then in a straight line and try to keep it... Uh, Try to keep it in a straight line to the best of your ability and most of the time you're going to reach this bridge. The moment you have reached the bridge you place a portal because after you take the waypoint for the prison you want to return to kill the dweller of the deep and I'm going to show you. So now let's go to the flooded deeps. The way you are going to find the dweller of the deeps is he is always going to be at a 45 degrees angle from the entrance. Now you progress the map a little bit and see where it leads you. So most likely it will be somewhere in this area because this is where the map leads. Let's see. So I'm guessing this will be the dweller of the deep. If you look at my character here and the, the entrance is going to be a 45 degrees angle. I mean, the climb, the ledge, let's show you the ledge quickly. The ledge basically keep close to this wall right here, don't stay close to the cliff. So if you just stay close to the wall, you're always going to uh, minimize the time you spend back backtracking. And the climb, you just want to climb those hills. I'm not going to do that because I don't have a waypoint right now, but you basically just want to do... Uh, to climb those hills as much as possible and that you that's the way you know you're going to be on the right path For the prison for the most part you're going to go top right and you're almost always going to find the Trial here, but not all the time what you do at this point you basically go in a you make an L like this and then you try to go in a straight line Most of the time this strategy is going to work. Not all, not all the time, but most of the time this strategy is going to work. So from from the the way the trial is facing, try to make an L and try to keep walking in a straight line. Going to show you again, as I said, not all the time is going to work, but most of the time this will work. Try to go uh, to the um, top right because uh, because most of the time like in this case it's not always going to show here it's going to show here now I'm going to make an L like this and I have I'm already seeing the new the point for the new zone it's not always going to be like that sometimes you're going to find the the portal for the next zone here but for the most part it works Upper prison, honestly I don't know this layout well. I know that usually you make a turn, so if the waypoint is here, the next the next portal is going to be somewhere here. This is usually how it works and I try to guide myself by that. It's going to be a U-turn, whether it is on this part of the map or on this part of the map. But as I said, I don't know the layouts for this zone. So I cannot, I cannot give you an advice. This is how I guide myself, basically. I try to uh, to see where that you would 
end up. So I can already see that it's going to be here. The Warden, you're going to follow this blood trail. It's not like you're going to get lost in this, but basically just follow this blood trail and you're always going to uh, reach Brutus. Sometimes Brutus can be the, the path to Brutus can be divided into uh, rooms and uh, if you follow the blood trail it will always lead to Brutus right here. Let's show you the prisoner's gate. What you want to do at prisoner's gate? Advance a little bit and then move left to right. If you see this cliff right here, jump it and this is the right path. And you want to, uh, to go right and up. Most of the time this is going to be the correct decision. Go to the right and up mo and most of the time you're going to reach the new zone. When like I'm this. Ready. Ship graveyard. Stay close to this wall right here. If you see the waypoint, take it, and if you see a book, it means Fairgraves is near it. If you don't see a book here, it means that Fairgraves is going to be closer, is going to be close to the portal for the cavern. So you go around this, this wall right here, and most of the time you're going to find the ship graveyard cave right here. And by continuing I'm not going to show the layout for the ship graveyard because I don't know it. By continuing following the wall, you're going to reach Cavern of Wrath all the time. To find Marvel in the Cavern of Wrath and Anger, basically what you do, you follow the river. On the minimap, you see that this green right here, that's the river. So you just uh, try to guess where this would lead. And try to stay close to it uh, as to the best uh, to the best you can. And you'll see that most of the time, I mean, not most of the time, all the time, you will, you will get to Marvel or to the next zone. I'm going to show you. I'm still close to the water, and there's a new zone. And Cavern of Anger, it's the same thing. This was Act One. <laughs> 